My favorite Psalm is Psalm 143, verse eight. This verse is very meaningful to me. It's a reminder that if I take time in the morning time to dive into God's word, he's gonna show me his unfailing love. I'm gonna learn more about that love. But also, if I take that time, he's gonna show me, hey, how I should leave the house, how I should walk, how I should talk, how I should be for him. So my prayer every morning is this, show me the way I should go, God. Let me be a light for you. Hey Calvary, my favorite Psalm is Psalm 23. It was the first scripture that I ever memorized. That's right, I was invited by a neighbor to go to church and when I walked in that Sunday school classroom on the board was Psalm 23 and a challenge for us to memorize it and come back and earn a box of candy. And I liked candy, but it also was the start of me memorizing scripture, the start of my relationship with Jesus, it means so much to me. If you've never read Psalm 23, it reminds us that we are not alone, that God is with us and walking beside us. I hope and encourage you to check out Psalm 23. Well, good morning, everybody. It is great to be here today uh, in a different role than I typically do. I don't, I feel weird not telling you what the announcements are. So I'm excited to be here to share. Welcome to those of you who are here in this room with us, uh, watching maybe in another venue, and those of you who are joining us at home. Um, I love that we can be here and there, and we're all doing church together. And so it is, it is good to uh, have technology to help us with that. Uh, my name is Leah, and my job here is the serve director, and what that means, it doesn't fit really on a business card, but it means I help us as a church to love our community. Uh, we call that love the 419, whether we're working in a school or helping feed somebody, and then also to be a part of uh, many missionaries that we as a church get to invest in. Uh, we call it love the world, and I always love bragging because, Calvary, you guys are amazing, and because of your giving, Every month, we are able to partner with over 160 missionaries all around the world, which is fantastic. Uh, uh, real quick, though, I like to brag when we have one of our own here. And so I just want to say hello to the Hammets. They're joining us today from Bolivia. Uh, we love all of our missionaries equally. <laughs> but when they call Calvary home, we have like a little extra, we have like a little extra in our heart for you guys. So, so glad to see you. Uh, as you're here visiting family, we hope that you guys have a great time as you visit and fundraise and all the things that God has for you while you're here in the States. Well, today we are going to continue to talk about our songs of summer, the things we've been kind of moving through, and that is talking about the book of Psalms. Pastor Chad asked you to open your Bibles there, so if you do have a physical copy uh, it's really easy to find it. It's like the easiest one. You just open up to the middle. And even if you don't have those fancy tabs on your Bible, you can usually find it. Uh, and if you have your phone, you just have to touch the word Psalms and then it takes you there. But we're going to turn to Psalms and continue to talk about it. You know, Psalms has so many different kinds of verses or different kinds of songs in that, in that book some of those songs bring us comfort in times that we just need that extra comfort. Some of those songs uh, bring us uh, instructions on how to praise. Some of those songs teach us that it's okay to sing the blues sometimes and walk us through that. Some of those psalms give us instructions on how to live, and some just give us good advice on the things we should do as we live our, as we live our life, as we walk our Christian walk. And today we're going to talk about one of those ones that gives us some good advice so Psalms 119 is where we're going to start. Uh, uh, 119, that chapter is the longest chapter in, in Psalms, 176 verses. And most of those verses, they talk about God's word in some way, shape, or form. And the one that we're going to use today does not disappoint. Uh, Psalms 119, verse 11. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. It's very short and to the point, right? I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Here the psalmist is giving us some good advice. They have learned that as they take time in their life to hide God's word in their heart, it helps them to not sin against God. And I don't know about you, I don't really wanna sin against God. Uh, he is my creator, my savior. He is my father, my friend. And so if I can learn how to not sin against him, I think that would help us go a long way. And so that's what this verse is showing us, the importance 
of hiding God's word in our hearts so that we can learn to not sin against him. You know, as we grow in our relationship with him, we learn how to honor God and how to love him. Um, And this verse is just showing us that when we put that scripture into our hearts, when we learn to memorize the words that are in this book, it can help us to love and to honor him more. And so this is one of the really important reasons that we want to hide God's word in our hearts so that we don't sin against him. Today, I thought we'll walk through a couple more reasons why it's important. We could be here until dinner time if we wanted to talk about all the reasons it's important to hide God's word, but I'll keep you, uh, I'll keep you on time so you can go to lunch today. So let's start with a really good reason why hiding God's word is important, because these are his words. 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching and rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And we see it again in Matthew 4, 4. Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Everything in this Bible, everything is comes straight from the Lord. And it, What better way to be inspired? What better way to know him better than to know the words that he speaks? This book is full of lessons that he wants us to learn. It's full of encouragement that he wants to give us, his children. And it's full of direction that he wants to share with us to teach us how to walk on this path that we're on. And so that's one of the reasons why we hide God's word in our heart. Because it is his words. The second reason that we hide God's word in our heart is because... Well, the Bible tells us to. Deuteronomy eleven eighteen. fix these words of mine in your heart and minds. Tie them as symbol to your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Let's look at it again in the message, which is a version of the Bible that sometimes kind of helps us to wrap our heads around it a little differently. And so this is what the message says. Place these words on your heart. Get them deep inside of you. Tie them on your hands and your forehead as a reminder. Moses knew the importance of keeping scripture close to him so that at a moment's notice, he could recall it. And at a moment's notice, he could lean on the promises that God had given him. Even Jacob, or even Job, when we read through the book of Job and the many different trials that he went through, he knew the importance of having God's word close to him. I have a feeling that as he, uh, as he encountered his trial after trial, that he often didn't take time to like run to his room, you know, and get his copies of the scriptures and like dig through and where's that verse that I highlighted? I think that as Job's trials happened, he was very happy that it was hidden in his heart. Job 22, 22. Accept instruction from his mouth and lay up words in your, lay his words in your heart. And so we hide God's word in our hearts because his word tells us to. And then thirdly, we hide God's word in our heart because of the guidance that it gives us. I don't know about you, but there are some days and some seasons of life where I can kind of feel like I'm getting a little turned around, or maybe it seems like it's so dark, it's hard to see like a light at the end of the tunnel, to know that you're heading in the right direction. There's a lot of things in our world that kind of make it a dark place to live at times, whether it's the news and the media kind of swirling around us, Uh, maybe it's somebody else's attitude, or maybe it's our own attitude, Uh, maybe it's the things that are, you know, constantly bombarding us on our phones or our screens, Uh, maybe it's even just trying to keep up with those around us, keeping up with the Joneses. It can make it hard to see the path that we are supposed to walk on. And so we have a psalm that helps us with this. Let's turn to Psalms 119, verse 105. Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light unto my path. Hiding God's word in your heart is like, it's like having that flashlight. You know the people that wear the flashlight on their belts? Does anyone have one on their belts today? But it's like having that flashlight with you. You can pull it out at a moment's notice I think often in our context, in a Toledo context, if you go out to Oak Openings and you go like a little too late at night, or not at night, but you know in the evening, and you get a little too deep into that forest, as that sun starts to set, it can become really challenging to find your way out, our big scary woods that we have here in Toledo. But when you have a light with you, like God's word, you can always have it help you find 
the path that you need to be on. Some of you know that I lived in South Africa for a season of my life. Um, I had the pleasure and honor of being a missionary and living in South Africa. And where I lived in South Africa, we called it uh, deep in the bush, which in uh, Ohio means we lived really far in the country. And when you live deep in the bush, it gets dark at night, like really, really, really dark at night. And I lived on a piece of property that um, had a bunch of different homes on it, probably like a dozen or so. And so after work, you'd head to your house and maybe make your dinner. And then you'd want to go visit a friend or something, you know, watch a TV show. And so you'd have to head out into the very, very dark space. And there was a path to get to their home or maybe a sidewalk. And I knew the path. I would take it many times during the day. So I knew if there was a step that I needed to take or a tree I needed to go around. But the problem with living deep, deep into the bush in Africa, there's a lot of things that live deep, deep in the bush in Africa. <laughs> things that you don't necessarily want to run into on a dark path. And we lived on what we call a game lodge. I don't really have like an Ohio context for that, except for it's like, it's like living at a zoo, but you live in the zoo, okay? <laughs> So we had a very large fence that surrounded our property. We lived on about 2,000 acres, but we had really cool African animals. Like we had giraffes and we had zebras. And then you had things like Cape Buffalo that just, if you don't know what a Cape Buffalo is, you don't want to get too close. And we'd have cats that would jump our fence and you'd run into them sometimes. We had baboons, a lot of poisonous snakes. And so those are the things that at night you didn't want to run into on a dark path without a light. And more than once, I would leave my porch and head to a friend's house and get halfway there and realize, I didn't bring a light with me today. And I would just hold my breath and hope for the best and hope I didn't hear any like rustling over in the corner. And I was very fortunate. I made it through all of my years without uh, running into anything too scary. But I had some roommates one night that didn't have as good of luck as me. And they went out to go visit somebody, and I had stayed home that day. And I heard about 30 seconds, a minute after they left, they walked around the corner of the building, I heard a very, very loud scream. And I went running towards them, and they came running back towards the door where the light was. And I was like, what happened? What happened? What happened? And they said, oh, we went around the corner. There was a spitting cobra. We're not making these stories up, people. And I said, a spinning cobra, like, what did you guys do? Well, luckily, one of our dogs was with them that night. Uh, in South Africa, many people own these little Jack Russell Terriers because they're, like, really good snake dogs. I learned that night. It's very important to have a Jack Russell living with you. Uh, his name was Simba, and he ran up. He grabbed that. I know, it's not funny. His name was really Simba. But he grabbed, the, he grabbed that snake, and he saved those guys from what could have been a really disastrous evening walk uh, he is kind of trained. Those dogs know what to do. And so he shook that snake and it ripped in half and the body went one way, the head went the other way. And my friends never went on a walk again at night without a flashlight because they learned their lesson and that dog really saved them. But what could have saved them was just having a light with them when they went out into that dark path. God must think the same thing about us when we're kind of like stumbling through life, right? Right? You're walking on the path and all of a sudden you run into temptation or you run into something maybe that you've created as an idol in your life. Maybe you run into jealousy. And if we have God's word hidden in our hearts, we have a light that can help us with that. And so that's the third reason why it's important to hide God's word in our heart for the guidance that it gives us as we go through life. And number four we hide God's word in our heart so that it can be a blessing to other people. Hebrews reminds us to do life together and to encourage each other. So we're gonna read in Hebrews 10, verses 24 and 25. Let us consider how we may spur one another towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. When we hide God's word in our hearts, it can give us the right words to say at just the right time. And often we don't even know what the right words are to say or when it's the right time to say them. But that's the benefit of putting God's word in our heart ahead of time. The Lord can bring those things to our mind when we're with a friend who needs encouraging, when we're with a friend who needs a word to direct them back onto the path. And the other thing that it can help us do is with our people, our neighbors, our coworkers, maybe someone who hasn't had a chance to move in that direction of having a relationship with the Lord. 1 Peter 3.15 helps us understand this. But in your heart, revere Christ as Lord. 
Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks to give you a reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. We can use scripture in our conversation. And so we have a a series of verses in Romans that we refer to as, not we like just us, but like the Christian world refers to as the Romans road. I wanted to show it to you today in case you wanted to write it down and kind of talk about what the benefit of hiding God's word in our heart can be. As we talk with friends who haven't had a chance to know the Lord, these scriptures can help us prepare them and move them towards that relationship with Christ. Romans 3.10 talks about how everybody has sinned. Romans 3.23 shares that we have fallen short of God's holiness. Romans 5.8 gives or shows us that God loves us and sent us Jesus. Romans 6.23 shows us that we deserve death, but we've been offered life in Christ. Romans 10, 9 through 10 shows us that, or asks the question, do we believe what Jesus did on the cross and are we ready to ask the Lord to be our savior? And then finally, Romans 10, 13 shows us that we are all a part of God's family when we have accepted Christ into our heart. Now, I'm not encouraging you to memorize these verses so that tomorrow when you go to work, you can corner some guy and be like, I have verses I need to tell you so you can know Jesus. But what I'm encouraging you to do is to hide these verses in your heart so that as you have conversations with people, as you build a friendship with somebody, in your mind, you have the mental notes of how this person needs to walk their path so they can come to know the Lord. So these verses become a resource for us, not like a weapon for us. These verses become a tool in our toolbox as we hide them in our heart so that we can help others have a relationship with the Lord. And so these are four reasons that we know that hiding God's word is so important. We do it because they are his words. We do it because his word instructs us to. We do it because of the guidance that it gives us in life. And we do it so that we can be a blessing to other people. So now that we know why it's important, uh, let's talk a little bit about how we get God's word into our heart, how we can start to memorize. It can seem like a huge task. I mean, do you see how big this is? There's a lot of pages here. And to try to remember everything line for line and word for word, you guys, I don't usually know where my keys are and I do not remember what I did two days ago. So thinking about trying to hide all of this in my heart can become really overwhelming So I have some hope for you, okay? I have some hope for us. They say that if you have, that if you're left-handed, that you are way better at memorizing things. Do we have any left-handed people in here? Oh, you guys are superstars. I can feel it now. All of Psalms by next week. They also say that as adults, we continue making lots of memories until the ripe old age of 25. Yes, I know some of us are more than 25, and so we just have to work a little bit harder to make it happen. And then studies show us that our brains are like this bottomless pit for all kinds of memories. So we have so much potential, especially if you are a 20-year-old left-handed person. You are going to blaze through the scriptures memorizing everything. But the reality is, is that we have to be intentional about taking God's word from here and getting it into our hearts. So I thought I'd give you some life hacks today. Life hacks on how to help you with your scripture memorization. Does that sound good? All right, so our first one is to ask the Holy Spirit for his help, to ask him to come alongside of you in this process. So let's look at John 14, 26. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. So before you get started, pray. Ask the Holy Spirit to join you, and he will bring these things to remembrance. Ask him to take these words from paper to move them to your head so that they can go to your heart. Secondly, add it to your day. Most of us are busy individuals. We have full calendars and schedules, things that are happening. So the thought of like finding another set of time to set aside, to do scripture memory, can be really overwhelming. So add it into your day. Um, If you don't have your phone currently in your hand, I'm assuming it's near you somewhere. And so we have this tool that can help us find an app that will read scripture out loud to you as you drive your car, as you mow your grass, Find an app that will help you and quiz you so that you can, don't do that while you're driving, 
so that you can learn these memory verses and you can hide them in your heart. So add it to something that you are already doing in life. Number three, read the verses out loud. Studies show us that when you read out loud as you're processing, it increases your ability to memorize so much more. So you might look silly if you're doing it like in front of a large group of people, but find some time to read the scripture out loud as you begin to hide these words in your heart. Number four, find a verse that applies to your life, that applies to a current situation that maybe you're living through. I think that when we have verses that are, you know, uh, important to us because of the life and the place that we are in life, it's so much easier to hide them in our hearts. So I thought I would give you guys a little head start, and I thought of some common situations that we have in life today. And so I'm going to tell you a couple of situations, and I'm going to give you some verses to memorize. So if you have a pen or a note app on your phone, see if any of these life situations apply to you. When your kids are driving you crazy. Eh? Anyone? Don't raise your hands. Anyone? Okay. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. Hide these verses in your heart and play them in your head when the kids are putting you at your wit's end. When the news and the media are becoming overwhelming and too much. Isaiah 40, 31. When you want to punch that guy at work. Hey, I don't want to punch any guys at work, okay? I'm good, I'm good. This is your verse. 1 Chronicles 16, 11. Hide it in your heart. For when that guy comes up to you that's always pushing your buttons and always making your day not so great, hide this word in your heart. When you don't have an answer for a friend who maybe is dealing with death or the loss of a loved one, Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. The Bible is full of verses that speak to us about our current life situation. And so when we take the time to find those verses and hide them in our heart, it can help us to walk through that season. Number five, do it with a friend. Make it a game. Studies show that when we test each other, for all those moms who make you tell your spelling words over and over again, studies show that that does help with our recall and it helps to improve the things that we're remembering. You know, every Sunday there are hundreds of kids on this end of the building who are going to church. There's a bunch of them down there right now. They're singing, they're dancing. It's church, it just looks a little different than the church we're currently having. But Pastor Lindsay gives them a Bible verse every single week. So if you know any of those kids down there, if they belong to your family or some of them are your friends, I would encourage you to find out what the Bible verse is and do memory verse quizzing with them back and forth during the week. Challenge them. Say, I bet you I can memorize it faster than you can. You won't be able to. <laughs> They'll beat you. But make it a game and do it together. So I did some investigating work for those of you who have kids and I found out what the memory verse is today. I'm gonna tell you. You write it down. If you walk slowly to go pick up your kids, you could already have it memorized and beat them like right out of the gate. They'll be so impressed. Are you guys ready? Pastor Lindsay, she told me not to, don't tell her that Pastor Lindsay gave this to me. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 10. Two people are better off than one, for they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. I could not think of a better verse to remind us that it's easier to do this together. So find a friend. Number six, get up and move. Grab a note card, write some verses down, and head out, take a walk, or go for a jog, and allow as the blood is moving through your body to help it to move those verses from your head to your heart. Studies say that will improve your memory by 20%. So if you run a lot, maybe your percentage will go up. Thinking, we need to think about memorizing scripture, about hiding God's word in our heart, kind of like investing. Very rarely, maybe some people do, I don't, but very rarely do we take our whole paycheck and like take it all and invest it, right? We usually just take a little bit of it and put it in an investment account or put it in a savings account. The next week we take a little bit and put it in a savings. The next week we take a little bit, put it in the savings. And memorizing scripture, hiding God's word in our heart is exactly the same. We don't need to sit down and think like before dinner, I'm gonna get it done. There's no way. We do a little bit at a time. So you take a few verses and you put them in your memory bank. You take a few verses and you put them in your memory bank. And before you know it, you are building a foundation of scripture in your life that will help you as you move through. Now, I wanna encourage you, it's never too late to start, never. 
However, it is helpful when we start when we're younger. So this is my encouragement to those of you who have littles in your life. Uh, Maybe you're a mom or a dad. Maybe you're a grandparent. Maybe you're an auntie or an uncle or a friend who hangs out with some kids a lot. Be intentional. Help kids to start to build that scripture base in their life as they grow up. Moses tells us this very thing in Deuteronomy. So we're going to look at Deuteronomy 6, verses 6 through 9. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all your strength. These commandments that I give to you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Um, Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road. When you lie down and when you get up, tie them as symbols to your hand and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your house and on your gates. So as you move about life, as you do life, talk about God's word. When you are getting ready for the day and when you are running errands, talk about God's word. When you're in the car driving, bring it up in conversation. When you're brushing your teeth and you're getting ready for bed, talk about God's word. Let it be something that they hear all the time. Recently, I was reminded uh, how important starting scripture memorization or starting to hide God's word in our heart can be when we're little. I was reminded by a very clever three-year-old. Her name is Lucille. She is my niece. She's so cute, right? She looks a lot like her Auntie Lala. So This is Lucille. She reminded me of the importance of hiding God's word in our heart when we're very little. She's three, and she's very interested in work right now. So she wants to get in dad's work truck, and she wants to go with dad to work. So the other day she said, Auntie Lala, can I come to work with you? And I was like, yes. (laughs) Yes, I would love you to come work with me because she is a lot of fun to have around. She is hilarious and very smart and gives her mom and dad a run for their money every day. So I graciously took her to give my sister a little bit of a break, and we brought her here to a Thursday night service. She knows that I work at a church because she often will video call me in the day, and if I'm here, she wants me to go to like every cubicle, and like everyone has to say hi to her, and she wants to see what's going on. So we brought her here on a Thursday night. We sat over here. I think she enjoyed it. She saw the fish in the kids' area. She found candy somewhere and had a lot of it. Um, She rode in the red buggies, which she called a train, and she was very impressed. And then she really liked our light-up crosses. She kept talking about them very loudly during service, and I was like, shh, shh, shh. But she had a good time. Uh, We headed home. She spent the night, and in the morning, she came downstairs. She headed straight for the television and grabbed the remote, and she's like, I want to watch TV. And as a good auntie, I was like, of course. (laughs) We can watch it all day if you want at my house. And so I said, Lucille, what do you want to watch? And she looked at me and she said, Salty the Singing Songbook. Mm. I knew my sister was raising her right in that moment because Salty the Singing Songbook, he is a major part of my childhood. For those of you who did not grow up in church in the 80s, I'd like to introduce you to Salty the Singing Songbook. He is blue. He is a book. He sings. And I don't... If you don't know, he would change your life. You really got to look into it. (laughs) Salty came on the scene in the early 80s. He kind of brought Christian music for kids into like a whole new level. And so every cassette that we would, a cassette, for those of you who don't know, (laughs) Google it. Google will tell you. But every cassette we'd get at our house, it was a whole story that would be told. And these stories were teaching us as kids lessons uh, like obeying your parents or not being afraid in the dark or being bold or making good decisions, not lying. And so we would learn all of these important lessons. And then throughout the story, there were songs that would be sang. And all of these songs were scripture. Guys, this was my jam. Salty sang the songs of the 80s that changed my life. It was a good time. Who here, like, do I have some Salty fans in the audience? Oh, yes. Guys, afterwards in the back of the atrium, we're going to have a sing-along, okay? (laughs) Come on over by the piano. It'll be good. For those of you who do not know who Salty is, I feel bad. So I thought I would bring a little bit of Salty to you today. No, I'm not going to sing and dance a song for you, but we will watch a video. I dug deep into the pits of YouTube and found us a salty video. So you have to pardon the quality. Remember, it was a different era. 
and pardon the clothing, although I think most of it you can buy in the stores again today because it's coming back in style. So turn your attention to the screens as we sing along with Salty. This Salty, I can't memorize verses from the Bible. I'm too little. <laughs> yes, you can. I'll show you an easy way to hide God's word in your heart with the alphabet. Come on. I'll spare you the rest of the song, but we carry on through the entire alphabet and we memorize a verse for every single letter. And as I sat there that day with Lucille, this is how I was reminded the importance of hiding God's word in our heart when we're little. While we sat there, I like, was able to sing along to every song, like word for word. Lucille is not impressed, but I was impressed because my parents were really intentional about the things that were put in front of us when we were kids. And because of that, I have these hidden treasures in my heart that I kind of sometimes don't even remember are there until it needs to come to memory. While I was working on this message, I was sitting up in my office and I was, you know, doing some thinking and some praying, typing, and I started humming. I hum a lot, so it's like not abnormal. But then I noticed that like random words started like popping in with my humming, and I was singing this song. And I was like, Salty has a song for my message. Of course he would. He always comes through, Salty, the singing songbook. And so I wanted to show you not only because, you know, we can all chuckle at what the 80s looked like, but because it reminds us of the importance of hiding God's word in our heart, what some silly songs and some scripture can do for us when we take time to let it sink deep in. So I encourage you, if you have littles in your life, be intentional. Before you know it, you watch enough of these Salty videos, you'll be hiding God's word in your own heart as you go. We have a resource here at Calvary. Uh, it's not our resource, it's somebody that we partner with and it's called Right Now Media. And Right Now Media is kind of like, think of it like the Netflix for Jesus. So it is full of all kinds of opportunities for us as adults to grow, Bible studies and messages that we can listen to. But they have an entire channel that is just for kids. And so I would encourage you this week, if you head over to our website, ToledoCalvary.org, scroll on down, we've put in a button all you have to do is click it, you'll get a little form, you'll fill it out, and we'll send you a free membership as a gift from us because we believe so strongly in God's word that we want you to have access to that, not only for your life, but for those that you get to influence. So make sure that you do that this week as you look for ways to get God's word and hide it in your heart. Well, today as we kind of start to head towards our wrap-up, I thought I would take us back to Psalms and talk about a few more of these songs. There are thousands of verses in the book of Psalms, and it can be, again, overwhelming to think about where you want to start. So I've picked us out a few different seasons of life that we go through as humans, and I'm going to give us some verses that we can start to memorize. And these would be great tools to put into your toolbox. So the first one we're going to start with, if you heard Pastor Lindsay on the screen earlier, she said that her favorite verse in Psalms is the whole chapter of Psalms 23. We're going to just talk about Psalms 23, verse 4. David is writing to us because he knows that God is with us no matter what is happening. And so sometimes when we are struggling to find peace in our life, these are the verses that we want to have hidden in our heart. Psalms 23, verse 4. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. This verse can bring comfort in our lives when we don't know where else to find it. When the pressures of the world are getting to be too much, these are the words that we can pull out of our heart to remember. The next season of life, or sometimes a situation we find ourselves in, is when we are struggling to find our plan and the purpose that God has for us. Maybe we've taken a couple of steps what we think is the wrong direction. We feel like we've fallen off of the plan that God has for us. 
And these verses help us remember that that's not possible because God is always with us working on his purpose in our life. Psalms 138, 7 through 8. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Verse eight, the Lord fulfills his purpose for me. No matter what's going on, and even when we can't always sense it, he is busy working on the purpose that he has for us, the plan that he has for our lives. And when you can't remember that, having these verses hidden in your heart can help. And finally, the last one, it's a doozy. It's a whole chapter. And these are words that help us to praise the Lord. Sometimes it's not easy to praise the Lord because sometimes life is not easy. You've walked out of a room and had a conversation you don't want to have. Something's happened at work or in your family. And it's hard to find words to praise the Lord when we feel like the carpet's been pulled out from underneath us. Psalms 100. Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. We are the sheep of his, in his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. These are words that when they're hidden in our heart can help us to praise him no matter what the circumstances, even when we don't know the right words. If hiding God's word in your heart is a new idea, these are great places to start on that adventure as you begin to memorize scripture. If memorizing scripture is something that's a normal part of your life, these are good tools to put in your toolbox so that you have them in a moment's notice. Last summer, a couple of guys out in Utah in the Salt Lake City area decided they wanted to do a scavenger hunt. I think they wanted people to get out of their houses. They'd been cooped up all spring, and so they got together, they pooled some of their money together, and they said, we're gonna, we're gonna hide a treasure in the mountains. And so they, they literally got a treasure chest. I've seen it. It's like literally a treasure chest from like a ship somewhere probably. And they got their money together, they filled it up, they went up into the mountains, they hid it, um, and they gave out clues. So you could join like their Facebook or their Instagram. Every week they'd give out a clues. Last summer, it lasted for four days before somebody found it. So this summer, a couple weeks ago, they did their second scavenger hunt. And they said, four days is not long enough. We want it to last longer. So they've made it harder. They've gone further. They have made the clues more challenging. And they've upped the ante. They have made it much more uh, valuable for your time. Over $10,000. This summer is hidden in the chest. They say that people are coming from Alaska to Australia to go up into the hills, to go up into the mountains and try to find this treasure. So you can imagine how many people are up in the hills looking for this. $10,000, guys, that's a lot of money for putting some hiking shoes on. But isn't this how we are as humans? That we are willing to work for something when we know what the reward is at the end. And hiding God's word in our heart is just like finding buried treasure. When we take time to put the scripture deep inside of our hearts, it is a treasure that will be part of our life forever. When you take the time to read God's word and allow it to speak to you, to hide it in your heart, you will have that reward with you for the rest of your life. And the cool part about hiding God's word in your heart is that there is always more treasure to be found. Calvary, I would ask for you to pray with us today. I'm gonna pray that the Lord would not only uh, grow and stir in our hearts our desire to build our relationship with him, our desire to do more than just check off scripture memory so that we can have that checkbox filled on the be a better Christian list, but so that we will want to have a more intimate relationship with him. And I wanna pray that the Lord would begin to stir in us a passion for scripture memorization, for hiding his word in our hearts a little bit at a time as we invest in our foundation. Let's pray today. Lord, I thank you so much that your word is alive and it's active. Lord God, that as we pick up a Bible, as we search a scripture on our phone, Lord God, that it's not just words, but that it is you speaking to us. Lord, I pray today that you would just stir in us a, 
a new passion for taking your word from the pages, putting it in our hearts so that we can have those hidden treasures with us for the rest of our lives. Lord, pray that you would allow our relationship to grow deeper with you, that you would allow us to become more intimate with you, knowing your word, knowing how to apply it to our lives, Lord God, and being able to bless other people with it. I'm so thankful for the reward, for the treasures that we will find as we continue to grow this foundation in our lives. We give you all of these things. We give you this week. In Jesus' name, amen.